Letting number 8682, Traffic Management Enhancements, Lambert International Boulevard. Federal Project Number CMAQ, CMAQ 9901604, St. Louis Lambert Airport. We have two bids. Meyer Electric Company, Inc. M-E-Y-E-R, Electric Company, Inc. Total base bid, $952,488.82. 952488.82. Gerstner Electric Inc. G E R S T N E R Electric Inc. $884,794.884794.00. So it's three bids, and I'm sorry. Gerson Construction Company, Inc., G-E-R-S-H-E-N-S-O-N. Total bid amount, $945,220. 9452200.00. Letting number 8683, Concrete and Brick Removal, Replacement, and Complete Sidewalk Installation, SP110. We have two bids. Rainier Construction, LLC, $815,679.50. eight one five six. Seven nine point one five Gersherson Construction Company Inc. G E R S H E N S O N Construction Company Inc. Eight hundred fifteen thousand one hundred twenty five dollars eight one five one two five point zero zero. With a low bidder, please meet with Miss Bean in the hallway. Thank you. Hearing number 8224 is being conducted pursuant to section 26.100.030 of the revised code of the city of St. Louis. The purpose of the hearing is to determine 
or the conditional use permit issued to Central Market CO Mohammed Mahmoud to occupy 4162 North Newstead as a convenience store with cooking and no liquor subject to certain conditions should be revoked. The conditional use permit number is 121853. I would also like to note for the record that there is also another conditional use permit issued to this um, applicant as well, conditional use permit all as well, and that is numbered as 121231, and there is no issue with the two permits simply because the conditions uh, that are in question today are the same conditions on both permits. The conditions in questions are as follows. Condition one, all banners, pennants, and similar devices for temporary outdoor display shall be prohibited. Condition two, any signage displayed in the window shall not convey more than 20% of the total window area. Condition three, applicants shall obtain a permit from the St. Louis Building Division for all signage, which must be approved by the Office of Zoning Administrator. Condition five, there should be no sale of items that can double as drug paraphernalia, including food scales, blunt cigars, examples of which are white owl, tan and black, swisher sweets, etc. Glass tubes, disposable lighters with pop-off tops, steel scrubbing pads and screens, rolling papers, ephedrine or pseudoephedrine, diet supplements, sleep aids, bath salts or other substitutes for illegal drugs. In Condition 11, the applicant must establish a trash removal contract through a private source, schedule for regular pickups, and maintain the entire premise in a clean and orderly appearance at all times. The Office of the Zoning Administrator has the burden to prove the conditional use permit conditions have not been complied with. After all evidence of the Zoning Administrator has been presented, the Board will ask for additional testimony, if any, in support of the revocation. Then, the conditional use holder will be given the opportunity to present evidence. Lastly, the Board will hear other testimony in opposition to the revocation, if any. Your testimony is being recorded. When you come forward, please state your name and address and be sworn in. As you testify, please direct your comments to the board and not to those in the audience. Members of the audience are asked to remain silent and not coach the witnesses. During your testimony, members of this board may have questions for you. Following the hearing, the board will proceed with its regular agenda. Following the conclusion of the regular agenda, the board will deliberate, discuss, and vote on the hearing. The board will notify the conditional use holder of its decision by mail in about two weeks. The Board of Public Service has in its possession the following documents, which are being in introduced into evidence. Item 1, a certified copy of the Zoning Code of the City of St. Louis. Item 2, the conditional use permit numbered as 121853, issued to Central Market, CO Mohammed Mahmoud to occupy 4162 North Newstead as a convenience store with cooking, no liquor, subject to certain conditions. Number three, letter dated November 6, 2018, sent to Central Market, CO Mohammed Mahmoud, warning of the violation of the conditions that were found upon a recent site inspection and the potential for a revocation hearing should the violations not be corrected within 30 days of the date of the letter. Item 4, a memorandum dated December 10, 2018 from the Zoning Inspector to the Zoning Administrator stating that upon that date, the Zoning Inspector found violations of conditions numbered 1, 2, 3, 5, and 11 of the conditional use permit. This memo includes photographs of the said violation. Item 5, public notices for today's hearing. And item 6, certified letters dated January 2, 2019, sent to Central Market CO Mohammed Mahmoud and Nair Abair Abjabar, 1204 Riverwood Place Drive, Florissant, Missouri, 63031, from the Board Secretary, providing notice of this hearing. The Board asks that the office, representative of the Office of the Zoning Administrator please come forward and be sworn in.
I do. My name is Myra Turner. I'm zoning inspector for the city of St. Louis. Okay. Upon reinspection of the uh, of the property today, number one is still in violation. They do still have banners out on the front. No permit. Um, number three still in violation. They still have a window that has. One, two, three. One, two, three signs that are illuminated. No permit. Um, and of course, number four, which says that there are no permits for the signage. And then number five is still in violation because they still have shelves with the cigars on them. And number 11 is still in violation because they still have the trash on the side and in the back of the building. So just to be clear, we are still in violation of condition number one, two, three, five, and 11. Oh, one, three, not two. Three. One, three. One, two. No, three, three replaces two, really. Okay. All right. Very good. One, three, four. One, three, four, five, and, and, five 11, and 11, sir. Got it. Okay. So two we're good on. Good. All right. Questions from the board? Okay. Have you, just a quick question for you. Have you had conversations with the conditional use permit holder about this previous to today? Yes, I have. And then I also spoke to him today while I was on, on the premises. And he actually asked me today who he, who he should talk to, so. In your opinion, have they made any strides other than correcting condition number two to correct any of the other items? No, sir. And to be honest, um, with him asking, well, today, and especially when I was on the interior and I was uh, looking at the cigars and stuff, he basically just said, um, well, everybody else. And as I explained, again, I was not there to talk about everybody else, whoever that might be. I was there to talk about him, and I asked him what did he do because he still had the shelves of cigars. So um, I did have dialogue even up until today with him yes sir okay any further comments from the board questions thank you very much if there's anyone present who wishes to testify that the noted conditions have not been complied with please come forward and be sworn in not been complied with not been complied with okay seeing none the board asked a conditional use permit holder to come forward and be sworn in Which has been noticed like the phone. Yes. Right. That's what to tell the truth the Yes. Yes. State your name for the board. Mohammed Mahmoud. Forty one sixty two North and New State, St. Louis, Missouri, six three one one five. Uh, yes, I, you know, I try and I, I correct everything, but I don't know the signs. Is signs in a window for open, you know, and and close? I don't know if I have to move that or no. And trash is no trash, you know, in, uh, around the building. I try to comply with it, whatever. That's why I like to ask what I should do. You know what I should, you know. And she talking about the cigar, the cigar. I have four stores around me. They, everybody's selling the cigar. You know, four stores, one block. You know, they all sell cigar. It's low, you know, just for me. I, I do whatever you guys ask me to do, you know. Not to sell it, I stop selling it, you know. Okay. So 
let's just get a few things out in the open. So you have a conditional use permit granted to you by this board to do business. Do you understand that, right? Yes. Okay. And the conditions are, as listed in the permit, they're very specific as to what you can and can't do. Okay? okay. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. And so the zoning administrators, uh, inspectors just testified that she has had dialogue with you in the past concerning these items that are in violation. Is that true? Yes. So she has spoken to you in the past? Yes, okay. she did. And are you just not understanding what it is that you're supposed to do? What it was, yes. Okay. Because and so, I thought, yeah, I'm sorry, I thought the signs, you know, I don't have to take it. The sign is that, the sign is that uh, open and closed. I clean all the window, you know. I, I don't know which one is that. Uh, so in the report that she just provided to me, for example, uh, one of the conditions talks about different items that you can't sell. I'm just going to give you an example, right? Which condition number five? And it talks about different things you can and can't have. One of those things is cigars. Here's a picture of an entire shelf of cigars. All these kind of cigars? Is so, or some of them? And so you have to work through that question with the zoning inspector okay. as to what you can and can't have. Okay. But I want to be really clear that all of these items that are listed on here that are conditions are very basic to understand. They're not yeah, difficult, yeah. okay? That's, that's true. And the other point that I want to make is is that it doesn't matter what the guy across the street does or the guy down the street does. It only matters what you have as conditions on your permit. So you need to have dialogue with the inspector, and you need to fully understand, and you need to comply. Because okay. if you don't comply, this board can take away your permit to operate, and you're out of business. Do you want to continue to operate? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, and sir. Will you comply with these items? Will you work with the zoning inspector and comply? Uh, yes, sir. Questions from the board? <clears throat> uh, yeah, the, the individual from the zoning department has spoken, and obviously uh, you're, you have spoken as well. Just a couple examples to follow up on the um, president's uh, comments. So when the zoning inspector tells you you have a banner in your window, and you don't have a permit, what part of that don't you understand? It's my direct question. I'm sorry, I don't, not, uh, she don't say anything about the panels. I thought there's a, it was another oh. the window, is a close with the paper, with the cartons, you know, just from the sun. And I removed that, you know, to open the door. That's what I thought, you know. Okay, let me go to another but one. But if it's the panels, I take them out, you know. Just okay. when I go back, I take them off, you know. Okay, the other just example is, and, and it was cut, the cigars were covered, I thought, sufficiently, but you have three illuminated signs at your business. You do not have a permit for them. No, is I it, take I have, them let me off. finish, please. Okay, I'm sorry. The, no, that's okay. The zoning inspector has told you you don't have a permit for three illuminated signs. Is, is that an accurate statement? Yes, yes. Okay, and what was your response when she said you have three illuminated signs, you don't have a permit, therefore they're prohibited for being on your business in your window? What was unclear about that? The thing I thought she was uh, a mission to me about the phone sign was it used to be a phone. And they took uh, the phone off. It was a sign, and I took it off. And all the cigar signs outside, I take them off too. I clean outside. That's what I thought about. I mean, is she physic? And this I don't know because I wasn't there. Is she physically pointing these things out to no, you? No. Well, then where are you? And where are the two of you having this conversation when she's on your prop on your premises? That's what I. She in your business. Talking from her car, her city no, vehicle. No, no, no. She was inside. She okay. was inside. Okay, and she's pointing at those things. No, uh, to that phone bill. Yes, she pointed to that. You know the okay. the phone uh, sign. Yes, she said that. I take her off. So the three illuminated signs, director, are right here. There's a cool sign, an open sign, yeah. and a pizza sign. Yeah, this. So I don't see a telephone. No, no, that's on top of the building, on top of the. I, th I think the point is, um, obviously, we want viable businesses in the city, but 
going back to some previous comments, some of the easiest things in the world to do are to know what your conditional permit says, to know what your is permissible and what is not allowed. And I, I just struggle with sometimes with the confusion um, of clear instructions. So, I mean, we're not here to shut down businesses. We're here I'm to sure. assist businesses in succeeding in the city. But we also don't want to keep coming back to these situations where, in fact, it appears there is should be no confusion because I then, promise the, you when then I we're go spinning back, everybody's wheels. I take wheels. them out. I take them off, you know. Okay, thank you. That's when I go back, you know, I take them off. Thank you. You're welcome. Further questions from the board? Just to add on, I think the point on some of these signs is they're not permitted. I don't know if it's necessarily you can't have them, but I, I would say you would take them down now, get them permanent, put a permit it, and then put them back up. Uh, do I so can, it's not I to hold you against average. I believe. You like them with three signs. You count them one sign or three signs. If I want to get a permit for them. I tell you what, if it were me personally in your shoes, I would take a picture of what you have now, take them down, take that picture to the to the get your permit and show them what you're talking about, and they'll tell you if it's two or three or that, that wouldn't be for us to answer at this point. I would take that and show them this is exactly what I want. How should my permit go and what should I do? I would that's just exactly eliminate any chance what, of. That's exactly what's in the picture. You know, them three years. I would on. take that to them. I would take it down now to be in compliance. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I take them down and I come back and check with you guys. I, I do have one more question. We've noted several violations. Um, a pretty lengthy list, in my opinion, um, but also a pretty basic list. If you walked away from this hearing today and you had an opportunity to rectify these in terms of taking things down or off shelves, how much time do you think it would take you? 20 minutes? Well, an hour? Like yes. Per, so, uh, one hour. Okay, so you could, you could comply with all these things that are presented before all of us today in one hour? Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. No problem. And, and one final question, you know, this is just a pretty basic one, but, you know, one of the conditions were keep the or, uh, pre, uh, premise in an orderly fashion. And uh, the zoning inspector talks about trash lying around, and she shows pictures of a dumpster with trash laying all over the back of your property. So to me, that wouldn't take you but 10 minutes a day to walk out there and pick the trash up you know, a couple times a day. So Can I look to the picture, please. Is the question that it should be a closed area for the dumpster or that there's loose, uncontained trash? That's, uh, you know, yeah, the, know I'm not sure I'm the that's not, yes. You have a dumpster and there's basically trash, and what they say is keep, you know, have a private trash contract. But I have, you know, you I do, have. Yeah. But it says keep the premise in an orderly fashion, which means no trash lying on the ground. So walk around a couple times a day, pick the trash up, yeah. make sure that there's not trash blowing around, right? I have somebody every day he do that, you know. I have somebody work, you know, every day he do well, that I, in the morning and in the evening. I can know? only ex imagine that she came at two or three times when the trash just happened to be in between that time. But I'm assuming that there's trash there more than once, right? That's why she's bringing it to us. So I, I, I'll take that. Thank you. All right. Any further questions from the board? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. If there's anyone else present opposing this revocation that wishes to testify, please come forward and be sworn in. I didn't. Yes. My name is Nail Abdul Jabbar. My address is 1204 Riverwood Place Drive. I'm the owner of that building, the property that Central Market is. Mr. Muhammad is leasing it from me. Okay. And he's been there for two years, almost three years actually. And I just received this notice, okay. The first notice I received, which is okay, it's dated January the 5th. 
from the city of St. Louis. I went to Mr. Muhammad. I told him to take out down the signs, actually. I told him to take the signs. He took him down, okay. There was scrubbles, okay, on the pictures, just like I, you guys seen, and signs in here. Okay. I told him, okay, you need to, pay, you need to paint the wall. He did. Which is okay. All these pictures, see. If, all these pictures. This is okay. <laughs> Left, right now, with his awning. From yes, there is a door. Sign is shows, okay, you know, okay, you know, on a gate. There's, okay, door, it doesn't say anything while he's open. Okay. Concern a trash can, I, I respect his, okay, question to, okay, to Mr. Muhammad. He do have a dumpster, okay, and he have a trash pickup. Okay. He, they come once or twice a week, I did ask him, but he do have a trash dumpster. It's with Republic trash. Okay. You probably didn't, okay, okay he, you misunderstood Mr. Muhammad and his comment, but I'm trying to, get, to freeze it for you actually, okay, in a better situation. Okay. The inspector, with my respect to her, she goes to him, she goes inside. She didn't tell him, she don't pinpoint exactly okay, the sign, signage outside or anything. You need to remove this, you need to take this out or anything. She, I did work with Antonio French and Bernice King for the past okay, 12, 15 years myself. I was in one, okay, on that area for that long before I even, when I purchased that building. I was in okay, Natural Bridge okay, area. Okay. And we do follow and cooperate with the city inspectors and aldermanic 100%. Okay. If there is any trash okay, even outside, okay, okay, he pick it up himself personal, you know. Excuse his okay, English. I know he didn't understand what you were asking him. Okay, when you ask him how long it takes you to, to cooperate. I guarantee it doesn't take more than five minutes to move everything that you okay, requested. But the only thing, okay, is, okay, is that sign it says Central Market. Central Market, okay, on the awnings. Does he have to move it out? I mean, okay, the inspector, with my respect to her or, or him, they could pinpoint if they don't understand a person, tell him, okay, you need to move this sign. Yes, they speak to him from inside, and they stay inside. But have the inspector seen a trash dumpster okay, on, on a gated area with Republic waste? Have she asked him if he ever used it or they have, he have service with him? I don't know if that question has been raised or not, but they do have, and we do comply, and I try to keep my building okay, on the code it's supposed to be. Yeah, the scrubbles okay, on the walls, I, maybe I haven't been there okay, over a year till I received the first letter in January, then, okay, Follow that, okay, which is okay, this from the city, as a matter of fact. All right? So I went to him. I told him, you need to move the signs. You need to paint. Okay. Where's your dumpster? He said, it's outside. Okay, right there. Okay, okay. It's in a gate, gated area. Okay. The trash truck, they open up the gate and okay, dump it. Okay. Concern of cleaning outside. He do clean every time, okay, but he's not going to stand outside every minute somebody through a a bag of chips or a paper and go pick it up. Yes, he clean the okay, kit, check it out two, three times a day. Okay. And thank you. That's all I want to tell you. Okay, okay. So I came, okay. I received this letter. I just responded to it. Okay, came to see you guys. Okay, and see what's if there is any question, okay, you feel free. Questions from the board for the building owner. Council. Would help the operator 
uh, to solve the sign problem and the trash problem? In the yes. Um, there's also you going on with certain items. Okay. Um, have you, can you read that on the that was I did. provided to you? I did. Okay. Can, how, how would you do that? Well, the sale of the items, okay, if this is okay, the rule and regulations in the city of St. Louis, I respect that and honor it. He, he need to remove it immediately, which is it will be taken care of as soon as we leave in here. Did you have any question about how to do that or what, what these items are? No, so I know exactly what it is. But, well, I was going back okay, to freeze okay, question one, three, and 11. 11, I know which is okay, the sale of the things. But one and a three, as we, you guys spoke about, okay, I know 100% about them. Okay. But 11, if he need to move it, I will have it, I will have him move him from the property, as a matter of fact. You're welcome. Further questions from the board for the building owner? So in your opinion, just from my perspective, do you, do you, believe that the conditional use permit holder, your tenant, does a good job doing what he's supposed to do? Well, he does and he does not, okay? Because, okay, if there's a mistake, everybody makes mistakes. If there's a mistake, it could be corrected. You know, as long as, okay, he understand, the people understand the situation, okay, what it needs to be corrected or not. Mr. Muhammad, he probably, okay, you know, okay, he, you spoke to him, his English is cut. Okay. So, if I was aware of it, okay, the things I was aware of, I mentioned it to him. Okay. But everything else, okay, okay, should be, he should be liable for. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions? Thank you very much. You're welcome. At this time, if there's anyone else opposing the revocation that wishes to testify, please come forward and be sworn in. Seeing none, I would like to introduce two sets of photos into evidence today. First, I'd like to introduce the zoning inspector's report as item A into evidence. And then I would like to introduce the photos provided by the property owner as item B into evidence. The matter concerning hearing number 8224 is now closed and submitted. The board will now proceed with its regular agenda. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Here. Director Wilson. Here. Director Hayes. Here. Director Augustine. Here. Director Ergie. Aye. Director Here. Edwards is excused and President Bradley. Here we have a quorum. I'll call the main order. From the President. Plans and specifications for letting number 8687 2019 Capital Main Replacement Program, 8 Inch Main and Bancroft Avenue, St. Louis Water Division. Plans and specifications for letting number 8689 2019 Capital Main Replacement Project, CMRP, 6 Inch Main and Morgan Street, St. Louis Water, St. Louis City Water Division. Addendum number two for letting number 8684, expansion joint structure and exit 18 ceiling replacement T1 baggage claim level at St. Louis Lambert International Airport. Amendment number two to, to the facilities management division's contract number 71881 for plumbing services with Tarasso Plumbing Services, Inc. Recommendation that the board declares as an emergency Replacement of miscellaneous HVAC equipment for termi terminals and concourses at St. Louis L Lambert International Airport. Recommendation that the board declares as emergency action. Replacement of engine house roofs, package one, St. Louis, Missouri. <coughs> From the President, Director of Public Utilities, Streets, Parks, Recreation, and Forestry. Joint recommendation that permit for Metropolitan St. Louis Sewer District to construct water storage modifications at the lakes in Benton Park, east and west, 
Clifton Heights Park and High Park be approved subject to certain conditions. From the Director of Public Utilities, recommendation that the board declares as the emergency the following. Labor and material to rebuild a Chapman 30-inch discharge cone valve for distributive pumping station. And repair the motor of Chain of Rocks distributive pump number two. From the Director of Public Utilities and Public Safety, joint recommendation that the following subdivisions be approved subject to certain conditions as follows. Black line design, 401 developer in City Block 5520, Nepper Investments, Inc. at 2518 through 20 South 12th Street in City Block 877, Zive, Zive, Zive Vegas, Inc., 5400 and 5402 Magnolia, and City Block 40, 58 East, Aquano, Leno, and Ricoyo at 4841 through 43, Olitha, and City Block 5267. From the Director of Public Safety. Recommendation that the following festival zone be approved subject to certain conditions as follows. Dogtown Irish Festival and AOH Parade, March 17, 2019. Dogtown Neighborhood, closing town from Wheels in the Park to Manchester for the Parade Street Festival to follow the parade on March 17th with a smaller street closure. Now we have the conditional uses. Good afternoon, members of the board, President Bradley. My name is Dylan Mosier, Zoning Plan Examiner for the City of St. Louis, and I'll be representing the Building Commissioner at today's meeting. Per board order number 766, transmitted here with our recommendations for the following conditional use agenda applications. Approval is recommended for two applications, uh, 6080 West Florissant, 5516 South Kings Highway, and approval with conditions is recommended for four applications. Those are 4150 West Lee, 4914 Thecla, 1102 McLaren, and 5350 Chippewa. And lastly, denial is recommended for a single one application, 4571 Gravoy. I request these recommendations be approved as submitted. Are there any questions from the board on the conditional uses? I move to approve the conditional uses. Second. Moved and seconded for approval of today's conditional uses. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Hayes. Aye. Director Augustine. Aye. Director Ergy. Aye. Director Edwards is excused and President Bradley. Aye. Conditional uses are approved. Hearing number 8224 for 4162 North Newstead. We had testimony today from the zoning inspector. We also heard from the conditional use permit holder as well as the building's owner. And there are a series of conditions that are still in violation of the conditional use permit today. For some reason, there is some amount of confusion as to exactly what is being requested or required, would probably be better to state, of the conditional use permit holder. The conditional use permit holder and the building owner testified that if there were issues that they would be resolved. So with that opening description, I'd like to open the floor for comments from the board or questions. Um, I'll be willing to make a motion here in a moment, but uh, just to follow up to my questions and comments. Uh, even though there is confusion, it seems agreed upon that this can be, all the conditions can be met in an expeditious manner and without a long delay, um, which I don't think the board, in my my personal opinion, I don't know if it'd be appropriate to have a long delay on uh, circling back on this issue. So that's my, those are my first comments. Okay. Further comments from the board? Okay. 
Do we have a motion? Yes. Uh, I'm just looking up a date. Um, I make a motion that all all pre, uh, all noted violations presented today are rectified by next Tuesday, February fifth. If that if that is possible, uh, with Board of Public Service with the paperwork process, so to speak. If it's too aggressive, then uh, well, that's my motion. We have a motion on the table for everything to be completed by next Tuesday. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second and a motion. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Hayes. Aye. Director Augustin. Aye. Director Ara G. Aye. Director Edwards is excused in President Bradley. Aye. The motion's approved. And basically what that means is the conditional use permit holder has seven days to comply with the conditions, and we will revisit this in seven days. I'd like to call your attention to our meeting minutes from last Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019. Are there any questions or comments about the minutes as presented? So you now take a motion, please. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Move to second for approval of last week's minutes. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Hayes. Aye. Director Augustin. Aye. Director Ergy. Aye. Director Edwards is excused in President Bradley. Aye. The minutes are approved. Today's agenda, questions or comments on the agenda? I move to approve the agenda for today. Second. Moved and second for approval of today's agenda. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Hayes. Aye. Director Gustin. Aye. Director Ergy. Aye. Director Edwards is excused in President Bradley. Aye. Today's agenda is approved. Motion for adjournment, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you all. <clears throat>